Have you ever tried to measure or actually wondered what your latency would be? I mean, your real latency from the moment that you click or move your mouse to the moment that the image appears on the desktop or on the screen, on, on your display. AMD just released today the Frame Latency Meter FLM 1.0 and let me just say this because this application is actually very, very easy to use and at the same time, it's free. It's free! It's free! It's free! But well, introducing Frame Latency Meter FML version 1.0, we have an image, yes, it is, uh, <laughs> it is with CMD, but don't start panicking because it's really easy to use. So let's just uh, uh, read a brief introduction. FML Latency Measurement Tool is a must-have for anyone who wants to measure the response time of their games with mouse events. With its advanced features and user-friendly interface, sorry, it is the perfect tool for gamers, professionals and anyone who wants to optimize the overall gaming experience. And if you want to optimize the Windows experience, you have GVG More! Bringing you lots of software deals like Windows 10, Windows 11, Office 2019 or 2021 with a new Windows 11 design. And for all of these, you can use my SKG discount code for 30% off, getting a Windows 11 serial key for $22 and a Windows 10 one for only $15. Then use the key on your Windows settings and you'll have an activated system. The tool measures the entire latency of the mouse response time from the moment the mouse is moved to the moment the frame is displayed on the screen. It includes the options to use a selection of frame capture codecs such as the Advanced Media Framework AMF, uh, optimized for AMD GPU or desktop duplication, the XGI, basically the same one that um, the, the frame generation from lossless, from, from lossless scaling uses, by the way. And this tool provides detailed statistics for latency and effective frame rate measurements, which is exported to a CSV file for further analysis. But you don't actually need to go to the file because it also allows you to show uh, on the same console window, sorry, but we'll get there. Basically, all you have to do is go here, go to to GitHub, to Frame Latency Meter, download it, download this one, FLM version 1.0, and this will appear, FML version 1.0, oh! open it, extract to, okay, and now you have this folder, FLM version 1.0. After this, all you have to do is go, open the folder, right click on the FML application, and run as administrator. If you don't run it as administrator, it won't work properly. And this is basically it, all you have here, mouse right click in console window for user options, press Alt plus T to start and stop measurements, Alt plus Q to exit, and this is it. And the moment I click with the right button of my mouse, I just click on it and I have the, um, the FML, the FML, <laughs> the FLM latency display mode, I have the measurement using with mouse move or mouse click, I can select one of these. And as for the latency display mode, I can use run latency measurements using small samples, continuously accum accumulated measurement and show all measurements per line. And well, if we, if we, if we, <laughs> my goodness, if we want to see the measurements um, on the console on the console window, we need to select this one. Show all measurements per line. As for measurement using uh, the mouse movement or the mouse click, let's start by mouse movement. Uh, and by the way, you need to select if the game is using frame generation or not because that will mess up with um, with the movements that uh, that the software does in order to well to know the, the latency that you're running at. So let's start with no kind of frame generation. Just save settings, bam, right click once again, it is gone and now let's run the game, any game that you want. So now we're running in Ghost of Tsushima, as you can see, maximum settings and we're running at 1440p and we're running TAA. So basically native, not even FSR native, just normal TAA. And I want to, to, to do this in order to see how it handles the, the frame rate comparisons and we're around uh, 100, 100 and something FPS. As soon as you press the Alt plus T hotkeys, which will start the recording of the latency, Alt plus T. And as you can see, the camera will move automatically. And I believe that's how it actually, um, it actually handles the the FPS differences. As soon as I move my camera, I can move it once again, but it moves like this in order to for the FPS to be the same. So after like 20 seconds, we go and press Alt T once again, Alt T, 
and the camera movements stop immediately. Then all you have to do is go to the console once again and we have the measurements here. So let's, let me just open it a bit more. Oh, that's, that's all. But anyway, so FPS numbers and then the latency. As you can see, latency, for example, 20 something, 20 something, 20 something, around that, which is, well, which seems quite all right, actually. So 20 something, 26, 21. Uh, yeah, it depends, actually. But I mean, the, the layout is actually quite different from what I was having before without recording. I don't really know why. But let's now enable upscaling with FSR 3. Let's enable, for example, instead of upscale, yeah, let's see upscaling to see what kind of impact we do have. So we went from 100, 110 FPS to 147. Once again, Alt, T, and now we wait for the movements to, well, to do like 30 seconds. And after more or less 30 seconds, we have numbers once again. Now we have numbers, um, now we have numbers for the upscaling. So instead of the 112, for example, that we had before, 112, we have 150. And this is with upscaling, and we indeed have less latency. So at 112.3 FPS, we have, for example, 21, 29, 24, 24, 23, 27, 28, which is, well, in, on average, we would have, let's say, 26 or 20, around 26 milliseconds. As with upscaling, we get 150.9 FPS, and in these same 150 FPS, we have 16, 17, 16, 18, 15, 16, 21. So we do have less latency when using upscaling because the FPS output is much, much higher. But what about frame generation? Well, let's start by right-clicking on a console window, Selecting Game Users Frame Generation, Save Settings, right click once again, and let's go to the game, and let's enable the frame generation now. Let's do the opposite, instead of having upscaling since we're already having 150 FPS, let's try the anti-aliasing with FSR Native AA. So we have 100 FPS, and let's see how the Native AA works here. Now, in terms of movement, uh, if we look at native AA, this is this is FSR 3 native AA versus, or in this case, 3.1 versus the TAA. In this case, we have around the same FPS, 111, more or less what we had before, 112, 117. So we have slightly less. But if we look at the latency, well, it is more or less the same. So once again, 25, 25, 25, 23, 24, 23, 23, 26. So let's now enable frame generation and see what we get. Frame generation, enabled. We're now pushing 170 something FPS, Alt plus T. Here we go. And with frame generation, as you see, even though we have more FPS, because we, because we do have, of course, we also have way higher latencies, higher, way higher input latency when moving the mouse. Like we saw before, it is an average of maybe like 26 to 28, depending on the same exact scene. So still below the 30 milliseconds mark, while with frame generation, we have much more FPS. I wouldn't say double, but let's say 60 something percent over what we had before. Um, but yeah, the latency is just way bigger. And we have some spikes here and there. I don't really know why I selected that the game uses frame generation, but we do have massive spikes here and there, even though you can't notice them uh, in gaming. It's interesting though that this didn't happen when I tested before the, the game, when I tested Ratchet and Clank. Uh, these frame spikes didn't happen. Maybe this is happening because I'm using, I'm recording with a, with a GPU, maybe. Maybe that's the case. And after this, I have like 10 minutes of video footage of me trying to enable uh, or to kind of make it stick uh, because after some time, the, um, I don't really know why when I enabled frame generation in Ghost of Tsushima, it just wasn't working. The software did its thing, but the latency just wouldn't appear uh, after the time that it should be appearing. So I don't really know why, but it didn't work. So I just went and tested Ratchet and & Clank and things finally worked now. Now with this game I'm using 1440p, XCSS ultra quality and frame generation, FSR 3 frame generation with VSync enabled. And as you can see, 160 FPS uh, and it is perfectly playable. We do have input latency, I can feel the input latency of course. But yeah, it's not that bad actually, it's not that bad. And I know that the image ratio will be, will be kind of uh, narrowed, 
but uh, yeah, don't worry about it. All we want is the data. So once again, Alt plus T, and the camera is moving. Even the camera moves slightly different in this game. I don't really know why, but um, it is what it is. I don't know. Maybe uh, it didn't work better because I was using 16 per 9 aspect ratio while my monitor is 21 per 9. Maybe that's the case. I don't really know. Let's see the... Yeah, and now we have some very decent info, something that we didn't have before. I believe that it was due to that, to the aspect ratio, maybe. So once again, at 160 FPS, we have 40, 48, 61, 40 something, 40 something. We have uh, here the, um, the average latency, I believe. So 52, 50, 50, 50.8. I should have just started with Ratchet and Clank. Let's disable VSync then. We go to 200 FPS. Alt plus T. And we do have less latency with VSync disabled, and we not only have more FPS, but we do have the we do have less less latency for sure. And even if we had the same FPS, since we have VSync enabled, we would have more uh, input latency. I tested it because uh, originally the frame generation was not supposed to work with VSync, but then they actually added it as a frame cap, and that's why it has way more latency. But you can use it, I did it for Ratchet & Clank, for uh, Ghost of Tsushima, and so on, and I played it perfectly fine. Now let's see without any kind of frame generation. Disable the frame generation option, frame generation off. Now we have 120 FPS, considerably less, Alt plus T, and now let's start the waiting game. And we have them here. Uh, now, at 120, look at the latency. This is the latency that we have <laughs> with 200 FPS with frame generation. We have an average, uh, well, we have here like 500 and something, but we did have an average of, let's say, um, 30 something, 32, 33, 34 at most, but less usually less than that, so let's call it 34 milliseconds latency around that, while without any kind of a, a frame generation technology, we have 118, which is much less than 224, of course, almost half, but in terms of latency, the latency was much better. 27 milliseconds, 26, 26, 26, so around 27 versus the 30 something that we had before with almost double the frame. So even with this, uh, yeah, it might not work as intended. I'll be moving the camera with my mouse instead of letting the software moving the camera because there is the mouse input latency and there is my input latency of the wireless technology and so on. So things, well, there are many variables, I guess. 900 milliseconds, 900, 900, and then we have 27, 28, 36, 29. I don't know how we can really measure the mouse to display input latency uh, with the clicks and so on. Well, the clicks are better. We can notice indeed some differences in between frame generation and so on, but overall, yeah, I mean, it won't be that relevant or that trustable, let's call it that. Now let's try the click one, mouse click. Game uses frame generation, no, no frame generation, just to see if it works or not. Alt plus T, again, let's now click, bam, 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 bam. So several clicks after, right click, left click, Alt plus T, and let's see if we have some results here. 34, 34, 34, 34, and it is, it is odd because we do have a latency, sometimes 112, sometimes sometimes 34 but since this is not my cup of tea let's say let's say that i don't really know what this means but if you if you really know what this means just leave a comment in the comment section because i also want to learn i'm just the messenger here i'm just showing you that things are ready to be used uh, with the version 1.0 of the flm and yeah overall latency 122 then it came down to 96 on the second round which is well okay -ish, i guess now let's use frame generation and see if that changes. Frame generation. Bam. Alt plus T. One, one, one. 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 Pow, pow, pow. Alt plus T once again. 
and let's see what we get. So we have 122 and then 96, and now we have 99 and then 169. And I believe that these higher values are the ones where I click several times uh, in a row, and this is what happens, the input latency gets much higher. And of course, since we, we were using frame generation, the, in, the click latency would be higher, uh, from a maximum of 122 to 169. So yeah, is the software really worth it? The FLM really, really, really worth it? And what I mean with this is that I don't really know if I'm using the software properly, because when I'm moving the mouse myself, instead of letting the software do its thing, um, the values are kind of, well, kind of strange and sometimes do not align uh, or even sometimes they don't even show on the CSV, neither the, um, the command line windows. So I, once again, I don't really know if I'm using the software properly or not, but I guess I'll contact AMD about that to see if I am or not. And in case I am, if you're not moving the mouse yourself, it means that you're not adding the input latency that you have from your mouse, especially since I'm using wireless mouse, um, uh, wireless mice most in most of my builds, yes. They're not accounting the wireless difference that, well, goes from your mouse to your, to your wireless device, that then goes from USB to your computer, that then goes to the game, that then goes to display the image on your monitor. So I don't really know how accurate that is, but yeah, I'm just letting that out in order for you to know that I, I don't really know as well. I'm just the messenger. I'm just testing for you guys. For the normal person, let's say that. Uh, but overall, if you just want uh, the juice out of it, I guess this can be used, especially in terms of, of the, the camera movement. It can give you some accurate data in terms of, of maybe um, the, the latency that you have inside compared, for example, upscaling versus no upscaling versus frame generation with upscaling versus no upscaling with frame generation alone. I guess that in between those things, the software can actually allow you to see the differences. Besides that, yeah, not really. Just keep using the, the super fast cameras and so on in order to measure the real world differences because of course the software can't do that. But it is handy to most people and to some case scenarios, I guess. And well guys, that's all for today's video. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget, leave your like in the comment section. Leave your like in the comment section. <laughs> leave your like, leave your comment in the comment section and let me know what you think. I'm kind of tired, as you can see. Not because because I had to work. I was actually playing Last Epoch last night. Um, and I played like through the night and I woke up early, so that's why I'm tired. And English is not my main language. And when usually when I'm tired, English just doesn't flow the same way as when I'm not. But yeah, thank you very much for watching. Once again, leave your comment in the comment section and see you in the next video, guys. Cheers.